want me to put that on my todger? Yes, an alert, a warning there, as you may become nauseous whilst you listen to this next dissection of Harry and Harry's wife. There is a bath alert. You may find yourself wanting to chunder. You may find that a technicolor yawn occurs. You may find yourself having a conversation with a great white telephone in your bathroom. Accordingly, I would ensure that if you've got your best frock on or best shirt, that you consider moving yourself somewhere where you might be able to chunder without affecting the status of your clothes, that you have your chuck bucket to hand, that you perhaps have a chunder bag available to you. Thus, suitably warned, let's dive in. Well, if there's going to be something that's so saturinely sweet that it's going to induce sensations of nausea, there's a good chance that it's going to come from hello. And indeed it does. Rachel Avery, cocooned in a bunker somewhere in a street, beneath a street in London, has been tasked with coming up with 750 words or so for the purpose of once again ensuring that Harry's wife is focused in everybody's attention. Here, once again, because she's not doing anything of actual note or worth, it's bringing up the past, and it does so in relation to various aspects. It commences with, Watch Prince Harry and Harry's wife lovingly set up epic Easter egg hunt in Sprawling Garden. Now, Easter is some distance away, but the Easter that's being referenced here isn't a forthcoming one. It isn't the case that Harry's wife has decided that for Archie there's going to be an Easter egg hunt and to do it early doors. No, it's dragging up a previous Easter. Prince Harry and Harry's wife are hands-on parents to their two children. Facade management, we know that they hire nannies and therefore they can't be. Archie Harrison and Lilibet Diana and their shit flicks docu-series, Harry and Harry's Wife, revealed a lot of sweet family moments, including Prince Harry doing story time and Archie perfecting his piano skills, all part, of course, of the facade management. Another adorable clip from the series was where the Sussexes got to work setting up an Easter egg hunt for their son Archie in the garden of their vast mansion. Archie's grandmother, Doria Ragland, was also on hand to help with the setup for the trial, Lieutenant, which was laid out around their stream and beautiful flower beds in the grounds of their huge private estate. Harry's wife was pregnant with Lilibet at the time, but that didn't stop her getting stuck in, adding markers in the soil while wearing denim shorts and a sun hat. Gosh, isn't she brilliant? What a capable individual being able to do that. Gosh! How we all should look up to her and think, if only we could be like Harry's wife also. But enough of the Easter egg hunt. Here's now a revision, or rather revisiting history, by telling us more about their property, as if we haven't heard this all before. The couple's family home also includes a wine cellar, swimming pool, and separate guest house, where visiting friends and family, well, not sure who that's going to be, apart from Doria. They don't have any friends, and all family apart from Doria have been... Ostracised, I suppose Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank might make a visit. The Duchess, has, the Duchess has revealed, for the umpteenth time, they fell in love with the property at first sight. We did everything we could to get this house, Harry's wife told the cut, because you walk in and go, joy, and exhale, and calm, it's healing, you feel free. This, of course, is the trumped-up nonsense of which she regularly spouts from her mouth, rather than basically thinking, I like this house, it feels right, she has to come out with this crap of joy and exhale, it's healing. How the fuck is a house healing? It's not a bastard hospital, is it? As well as giving insights into their current home life at their dream £11 million property, the Shitflix docuseries allowed fans, are there any left, to follow their initial leap across the pond, where they stayed at Tyler Perry's stunning home for privacy ahead of securing a mortgage on their own mansion. In episode 6 of the hit show, bringing up the past once again, 
Archie's room at the temporary pad was showcased in all its glory. A sweet clip showed Harry and Harry's wife setting their young son before bed. Setting their young son before bed? What's that? Put him in a position, or do you mean setting him in front of the bed? And it revealed a lavish room for their young son, complete with a grand four-poster bed, which wouldn't look out of place in a grand royal palace, to be honest. Well, that's the idea that they're trying to create. And that is the totality of this article. It's sickening, isn't it? It's completely vacuous. It brings up matters which have come from the past. It dredges up information that we already know about. It tells us things which ultimately we don't really need to know. But this has only been published recently. Once again, Harry's wife, until just recently in some kind of lying low mentality, although as we all know, that isn't actually the case because she continues to ensure that PR puff pieces such as this are pumped out, and it demonstrates the general low cognitive function and delusion by which she operates that she still thinks that people are going to read this and go, ah, oh, isn't that lovely? What a beautiful family they are. Admittedly, there'll be a handful of sugars that will do so, but for the most part, many people will just go, what the absolute cluster fuck twat wafflery are we being exposed to now? Oh, for the love of God. Here it is. Hello once again churning out a load of bollocks which we've all heard about before and we never wanted to hear about it in the first place which is being done of course to assert control over the readership draw fuel from their responses and of course manage her facade of being a brilliant family member and a wonderful mother it's not as if anybody else has ever bothered creating an easter egg hunt or that other people don't have nice houses also and of course, are people really going to be that interested in knowing about the fact that there is a swimming pool and that they've got a wine cellar and all of these things when other people are struggling financially? Of course, this is demonstrative of Harry's wife's lack of emotional empathy, that she still feels it's appropriate to bang on about the lifestyle that they have with no regard for the difficulties of other people around the planet. But that's because she's so far up her own backside and demonstrates she really doesn't care, although, of course, she attempts to create the impression that she does. You're undoubtedly going to be feeling fairly nauseous after having endured that sacharine nonsense, and as a consequence of that, you, if you wish to chunder, I would suggest that you do so now, and then you can move on. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>